Hi there, this is Father Fish and my good friend Andy. Andy just came in today uh, with a problem uh, that he's having with uh, a very big active tank. Could you explain what the problem is, Andy? Uh, well, one of the larger fish started having a hole in the head where his nostrils are, right? So there's an infection there, right? That seems to be uh, uh, some kind of something like erosion around his nostrils, right, where they're enlarged and, and it seems like uh, there could be like a, uh, some kind of a cottony uh, infection. So I used a Paragon, right, and it took care of some of that, right, so it's not really spreading, but I don't think it's really addressing the real problem, only the secondary infection. Right, the secondary infection, of course, is the fungus. The primary infection is bacteria. Now the bacteria is caused by something else in the tank. Um, hole in the head, which is what you're dealing with, occurs when bacteria, when bacteria becomes so dominant that it begins attacking the flesh of the fish. And you're right, the nose is the natural place for it to start because that's an opening uh, to soft membrane even more so than the mouth. So bacteria will enter that and begin working on the scales and the, the, the head in that area. So here's the problem. The problem is a bacteria buildup. The bacteria builds up. Now, uh, let's see, we, we've been over a few of this, but I want to go over it again. What's your substrate, Andy? Uh, I'm using the deep sand bed, you know, maybe about three to four inches of sand. A little bit, little color with a little bit of gravel in there, right? But mostly uh, just fine sand uh, because uh, it's mostly the geos, right, that I'm running in there, right? You know, and I have some other dither fish, a little barbs and, and whatnot, right? But uh, the geos need, like, the fine substrate to sift their uh, food uh, through their gills, right, you know? What size tank is this? 100 gallon. So it's a big tank? Yeah, it's a five footer. Hi. Yeah. Okay, somebody's walked in, sorry. Uh, okay, so you've got three to four inches, but you have a very busy tank. Yeah, it is. A lot of big fish in it. Yeah, I just got some more barbs, right? So there's a lot of schooling fish along with the these uh, geos. So I've got the, the redhead tapajos, and I've got the white milleri, and I've got a, a Pellegrini, and... Uh, I'm not sure, maybe one or two. Oh, I got a, a Jupari in there, you know. So yeah, a lot of, lot of gravel light eaters. So here's what happens in a, in a deep sand bed when you've got a lot of fish. You're creating a lot of mulm, a lot of waste. And it builds up in that sand column. And it can build up right to the surface. Now, when that happens, the mulm is actually aerating the sand, which means that that oxygen is permeating through that mulm all the way down into the anaerobic layer. The anaerobic layer, when oxygen hits it, the bacteria that's in there is killed. The same thing happens in a septic tank. And a septic tank fails when oxygen permeates the tank and actually gets down into the anaerobics and kills the anaerobic bacteria. Right. So that's what's happened. Now, the fix for this is not to break the tank down and it's not to stir things up. The fix is really very, very simple. You simply add another inch of sand. And that will re-establish re the anaerobic layer. Okay. Lucas ran into this in his discus tank, and I have not had a chance to talk with him about it yet. He has the same thing happening. Now, he doesn't have the bacterial problem, but he does have a lot of mom, so it looks like a really dirty tank. His substrate is relatively shallow. It's two to three inches. 
all he really needs to do is add another inch of sand and that will very likely solve the problem. If one inch doesn't do it, then try two. But my experience is that when you hit this point, which happens, it's happened in some of my older tanks that have been set up five, six, seven years, where suddenly there's more and more mulm in the tank. I add another layer, another inch of sand, and it's taken care of. And it continues to be able to grow plants. The anaerobic layer reestablishes itself naturally and very quickly. So try that, Andy, and report back. Let's see if that solves the problem. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Thought this would be good to, to get on a on a video because it's a question a lot of people have and an issue a lot of people deal with. Yeah. So, deep sand bed. And if it's not deep enough, make it deeper. You should mention that everybody's using gravel and it's like a sewer. Oh, well, that's absolutely true. I know there are people who love gravel. I do not love gravel. I hate gravel because gravel creates an open sewer that has to be cleaned all the time. The people who want you to use gravel want you to buy lots of equipment to keep your tank clean. Well, you don't need to do that. If you have a deep sand bed, you never, never, never clean it. You leave it absolutely alone. Yeah. And when you start having a problem, make it a little deeper, add a little more sand to it. Yeah. You can go on for 20 years or more, just like that. And maybe in 20 years, you'll wind up with six or seven inches of sand, yeah. but you'll have a very, very healthy tank. Well, thanks for coming by, Andy. Andy always brings me food. He brought me Thanksgiving dinner today, so I'm looking forward to that. He's also active in our club. He's our, uh, our drink master. He brings the, the drinks and snacks, our hospitality host. Uh, not our cook, but the hospitality host for our club. So you'll be seeing him again, I'm sure. Yep. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, I add a little color uh, with the little bit of gravel that I already have on hand. So you can get a little color out of the sand, you know, just by just a, a little sprinkle here and there of, of colored gravel. Because you'll probably have that, right? But uh, you know, uh, the white, you know, the whitish kind of sand or the black sand is nice, you know. Yeah, you could also sprinkle it on the top. I've got some, some of that real tiny pea gravel that I like to sprinkle mm -hmm. on top. It just gives it a nice character. Yeah, it's uh, the sand's not great to get into my inlets for the bio wheel. Uh, I, I use a lot of marine land bio wheels and stuff like that, right? So I actually put like a, a foam. Uh, almost like a foam filter over that in inlet to keep the, the sand from getting into the impellers. Great idea. That'll ruin the impeller too. Yeah, true. All right. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Take care. Yeah. Bye, everybody.